obviously, you know, the, the Lamar interception, not his fault. Ball tip, tip ball, pick six, it happens. Mm-hmm. But it changed like the momentum of that game. Can they bounce back tonight? Because I'm with Nick. I like I like Joe Burrow to cover this game from a gambling standpoint just because he's Joe Burrow. Well, I just think that Baltimore has to get back to what they had been doing in previous games. Like Keith Mitchell barely touched the ball in the second half. Like at Cincinnati showed you last week in Houston, they struggle against the run. Devin Singletary goes for 150 yards. They moved him off the ball. They pushed him around all day. And I have a feeling like Baltimore in a short week is like as good as Mark Andrews is and Odell Beckham is healthy right now. His ankle that was bothering him early is cleaned up. Like he can he can scoop. I feel like Baltimore wants to just pound the ball on Cincinnati. And he might very well be able to do it and just control the game on the ground on a short week. I like the Ravens to cover in this game for sure. Let's talk about Monday night. Nick Costos with us, guys. You better you bet. Check out his podcast. It's absolutely great. Eagles Chiefs Monday night. This is one we've been waiting on, right? We've been saying we wanted this game to start the season. Let's be honest. And we didn't get it. And then we said, oh, when do we when do we get the Eagles? Oh, the, the, the schedule makers got this absolutely right. Midseason, getting ready for Thanksgiving push. And you get two teams coming off the bye. And oh, by the way, they have the two best records in each conference. So, I mean, you couldn't set up a better clash to kind of begin the stretch run than Kansas City and Philadelphia. We got such a good Super Bowl that everybody wanted to see this immediately. And, Baldy, I agree. Now you see the timing of it. So, with that said, Nick, KC at home, they're playing well, right? I mean, it's just hard right now to me, for me to look and say anybody's going to go into Kansas City and beat them. But they're only a two-and-a-half point favor over the Eagles. Over-under is 45-and-a-half. What do you think? Well, let's uh let's start the also I, I think Lions fans might be happy with how the season opener turned out. <laughs> I, <laughs> yes, I think were. Lions fans, Lions fans were thrilled with that. Um let's start with the with the total in this game. Uh remember these two teams played in the Super Bowl. Pretty high scoring, right? It's 45 and a half the total here. The total in the Super Bowl was 51. So like scoring down this year across the board in the NFL. Also, like the Chiefs defense is really good. And I think that kind of presents you with like a lower total than expected. So I think people will kind of look at that total and be like, wow, like that feels pretty low. Like it is low. Uh, I would never bet the under in this game. I bet the under in the Chiefs Dolphins game. I think this one sets up a little differently than that one. And I'm going to give you guys, and it's really like shallow analysis, but I think it's going to prove to be correct, um, just like it was with the Chiefs Dolphins game. And it doesn't mean I have to be right. I just think that I'm going to be. Um, basically, the bet is with the Chiefs favored by less than three, Kansas City two and a half. Basically, your bet is the game could land two or one. It's possible, unlikely, with a point total like this. Uh, Will Patrick Mahomes win or lose the game at home? Uh, I'll bet on Patrick Mahomes to win the game, always, in a spot like this. And I'm willing to be wrong. And, like, if I'm wrong, you tip the cap. I'm not wearing one right now, but I would tip it to the Philadelphia Eagles if they win the game. No disrespect to the Eagles, but, like, Mahomes to win or lose at home with that defense coming off the bye. Listen, just hope that Travis Kelsey didn't spend too much time in Argentina with Trav- with uh, Taylor Swift to get things rolling here. Give me, the, uh, give me the Kansas City Chiefs here in this game, laying the two and a half. Uh, I like Kansas City quite a bit. And last note here, betting-wise on this game, very high leverage game for NFL most valuable player. Like I know like CJ Stroud's been pumped up this week. He can't win. Not that he's not awesome. He's a lock for offensive rookie of the year. The Texans are likely not going to win enough games to get Stroud in consideration. It's probably going to be one of the two quarterbacks in this game. It might very well be like a loser leaves town match for NFL most valuable player in this game with Mahomes and Jalen Hurts. Baldy, um, the Eagles don't look like they did last year. Is it misleading? They're still a good team. They're a good team. But, I mean, if you look really inside the numbers here, and I don't ever get too carried away with stats, they were the number one pass defense in football a year ago. And part of, part of it was they led the league by a wide margin in sacks. They had 70 sacks last year. They pressured quarterbacks into a lot of mistakes. They had 17 interceptions last year. Every one of those numbers is down this year. Every one. So – You know, they're 28th in pass defense right now, and they've only taken the ball away interception-wise four times. Like, it puts a lot of pressure on the offense, which is really good. And Jalen spent two weeks getting healthy. That that bone bruise is healed up a little bit. It's not 100%, but he's a lot better. Um, I, I just think Kansas City's defense is going to dictate this game. I just think they're that good right now in the way that they're playing. And... The, the season that A.J. Brown is having, which is remarkable, like I don't think you're going to get those throws over the top. 
against Steve Spagnuolo's defense right now, like they have been getting most of the year. Like, I just don't think they play that style. They can play any style, but they're not going to let A.J. Brown just go down the field and catch these go balls like he's been doing much of the year. I, I like Kansas City in this game right now. Can I give just one quick prop thought here? In, in the games that Dallas Goddard missed last year for Philadelphia, Devontae Smith saw a big-time spike in his targets mm. and, like, yardage. Goddard's obviously not going to play. We await, like, how long he's going to be out. I expect Devontae Smith to have a better game than he has been having coming up Monday night against Kansas City for that Good reason. Good call, Nick. Good call. It is in the huddle, guys. We're spending some time with Nick Costos. You better, you bet. All right. Raiders and Antonio Pierce. They're playing better, guys. I mean, I don't know what it is. We, we can talk about, you know, just a, a new guy, the energy, but they got to go to Miami. Hanson Jets. Or you could just talk about the opponents that they've just played. Too. <laughs> <laughs> so we're about to see because they go to Miami. Miami's 13 and a half point favorites in this game. I'm just wa- watching this. Look, I love, and you know this, Baldy. We talk about, I love Max Crosby. I think he's a dog. I think he's a dude. But I just don't know if they can continue to ascend as they have. Raiders are 500, guys. Tell me what you think, Nick. This is a blowout? Uh, man, this one, this is like, in like betting terminology, we will call this like a close your nose special because it stinks. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to bet the Raiders on Sunday. And I'm going to wait because I might get two touchdowns in this game. Like, it's already up to 13 and a half. So, like, once we get into this range, it's like 13, then 14, then 17 are the numbers that you look at. So we're in between 13 and 14 right now. We get up to 14, and look, I'll bet the Raiders 13. I would have bet the Raiders 12 and a half. So now it's like if you're out there listening and you like the Raiders, like let you we lose nothing by waiting. Maybe we get a 14 before kickoff here, and like we and like we push if they lose by two touchdowns. This is really just like it's a it's a it's a number play here. It's like on field handicap. Like I guess I could I guess the case would be and Baldy, you talked about this yesterday with us on You Better You Bet that the Raiders are going to try and like not give up big plays. That's like what their defense is predicated on. And maybe it's a Tyreek like ten catch for like ninety nine yards game or something, and they're just not going to give up the big play. I'll just look look back to a couple of Miami blowouts at home earlier this year and the point spreads in those games where they're a huge favorite at home against the New York football giants. They're a huge favorite at home against Bryce and they spot Bryce young and the Panthers 14 points come back and win the game by 21. I remember because I bet Carolina and that was really brutal. So like the Raiders are not great, but they're also not that like they're not the giants even at that point, And they're definitely not the Carolina Panthers. And right now they're being rated like they are. And I get it. Dolphins coming off the bye. A-Chan expected back. Mike McDaniel can't stop talking about Jalen Waddle being healthy. Like, the secondary's healthy. I get it. Miami's awesome. Also, I think the point spread's gone way too far. Uh, pride and poise, commitment to excellence. Just cover, baby. Give me the Raiders <laughs> to cover the spread. Baldy, are they doing anything different under Antonio Pierce? Yeah. What, yeah they're feeding Josh, you know what they're doing? They're feeding Josh Jacobs. Mm. Like they, they, It's not how many yards Josh Jacobs has run for. I mean, but he's got over 50 carries in the last two weeks. And they're just giving it to him. Now, look, Aiden O'Connell hit Mike Mayer for the winning touchdown. Like, rookie connection. Like, they needed one big play. They got to play. But Josh Jacobs gave him the 40-yard run to get down there. And so, Josh Jacobs wants the rock. Like, he's not going to win the rushing title this year like he did a year ago. He's not. But if he keeps getting fed the way he is, um, and Miami's defense is vastly improved, they're going to be very good the second half of the season. To me, that's the game. Can Josh Jacobs run 30 times for 105 yards? Can he do something like that and just play keep away from that offense and just have Aiden O'Connell do enough? Now, that might, that might, I think that's enough to keep the the point spread close in this game. I asked Max Crosby uh, the other day when I was talking to him, I go, dude, do you have enough in the locker room right now to like keep this thing going and to go down to Miami win? He said, absolutely. Now, I expect that coming out of Max Crosby's mouth, but they I don't think they have enough. You know, they just don't have enough juice there right now. Yeah. Can I, can I just can I say just what Baldy said about Josh Jacobs? Antonio Pierce has been vocal about, and this could be like, and this is something that would get blasted by like the analytics, just saying, like, I don't just say reporting that, like people don't like to hear things like this. But, like, it's true. Antonio Pierce wants to get Josh Jacobs 100 yards every game. He yes. says that. Like yeah. He literally says, like, we want to get Josh Jacobs over the century mark. So, like, if you're betting props, you play fantasy, you play daily fantasy, the head coach is literally saying, like, we're trying to get the running back 100 yards. Just keep that in mind when you're betting this game. But, but, Nick, up that, that, but, but Carl, and Nick, to your point here, like, that's the biggest difference in this team. For whatever reason, the former regime – 
Like Don't they didn't it. want to feed the beast. Yeah. And that's what Josh and all Josh wants is the rock. That's all he wants. And the offensive line wants him to care. They love that kid with the Raiders. Like he is, he's like their, he's their everybody's, you know, big brother on that team. They love his personality. They love, they love the, that he's a gamer. Like it just makes sense. I don't know what they were thinking before, but this makes sense. All right. Before we get out of here, <clears throat> Nick, I want to ask you about uh, the awful Jets and Bills. Bills fire their offensive coordinator. We'll see if this looks any different. I doubt it. We know what the Jets are. Baldy and I were just talking about the fact they had a team only meeting and for the offense. Whoop de doo. Let's talk about the number though. Buffalo must win, right? Seven point favorite, 39 and a half over under in the four o'clock window on Sunday. Jets, Bills, what do you like? You guys are. Uh- you guys watch the HBO show Succession? You guys love familiar it. with that with that TV show? I well, love it. I feel like all Baldy does is watch football because he's the best. Baldy, like this, this shows. Baldy, this show. No, no, no. Guilty. Dude, this show. This show is outstanding. Carl, look at listeners. Look at this. Sean McDermott sounds like Kendall Roy, like when he gives press <laughs> conferences now. Dude, it's just corporate buzzword after cor- I, this quote that came out yesterday about what he wants the offense to do. This is like something like I could see like, like, like an executive, like a low level executive of Microsoft coming out and saying this. She's like, yeah, like we want to come out and play with energy in the subculture. Like what, the, dude, what the hell are you talking about? Like I'm, I'm nervous for what's going to happen the rest of the season for the Buffalo Bills. And like he, he's the mayor of scapegoat city. There ain't nobody left. Leslie, Leslie Frazier has gone. Now Ken Dorsey's gone. And it's all, it's all on Sean McDermott. Kind of like what Frank Reich's doing right North Carolina story for another day. Um, so there are times when I'll talk about games with you guys and I'll tell you, like, I like something. The people I talk to during the week like something. There is, like, genuine, like, split action on this game from, like, all the people that I talk to. Um, there are some people that, like me, that will look at the point spread. And we talked about this last week with the Broncos and Bills. And, look, I don't win every bet I placed. I did win that one on Denver. And, like, what I said was, like, at some point, do we have to start rating Buffalo a little differently? When they host a team like Denver, like the Jets, they are always like a seven, seven and a half, eight, eight and a half, nine, nine and a half point favorite. That's just always what it is when they're rated like this with Allen and McDermott. At what point do we say no more? Like not enough. Like we 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 are going to like take what we're seeing and we're going to apply it as opposed to saying, well, they're just going to go back to be what they were. Um, There are some people that will say the point spread's wrong. Buffalo needs to be favored by more. They will bet Buffalo and bet their number. And look, they may win. I'm going to go with what my eyeballs tell me here. And that's that the Jets defense has been a bugaboo for Josh Allen. And look like the Jets offense is horrendous and Zach Wilson's awful. And I feel like Joe, like uh, Robert Sala does these press conferences and Joe Douglas is standing behind them camouflage holding like a gun to his back or something like touting Zach Wilson. I don't understand it. Um, to me, this is less about the Jets and more about the Bills. Like, do you trust the Bills to win a game by margin? I guess it's possible, right, that Joe Brady invigorates this offense. Also, he got fired by Matt Rule. I don't know. Uh, I'll take the points with the Jets. I'm willing to be wrong. I'm with you. Uh, I I think the Bills are not who we thought they were. And this is going to play out, and we'll see where the season goes. But as far as this game and coming off of the L against the Broncos, you've got got a lot of stuff happening. And, Baldy, you know, we we around these locker rooms, you know – Guys, it's tough to turn around on a short week like this and 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 be prepared and ready. I'm not telling you they won't win, but as far as the cover, I'm with you on this, uh, Nick Costos. Well, you know, whenever if you're on the outside looking at Buffalo, and and Buffalo's looking at themselves, and they can't put their finger on what's wrong, it's a problem. And so, look, we, me and Nick talked about it yesterday. Look, Ken Dorsey's a scapegoat. They got to do something. They're supposed to be better than this, and they're not. But yet, we always find some reason why they lose these games. Do the Jets have beaten Buffalo two out of the last three times? Like, if Jets get the running game going, I know defensively they're going to play great. I know it. And they'll probably force a couple mistakes. But you could just feel this internal combustion with what Diggs did in the offseason, kind of what his brother's saying now. What's going on? It's not the cohesiveness that you need. And it all falls on Josh Allen. And when it does fall on Josh Allen, he's guilty of making mistakes. But at the same time, like they ran the ball better against Denver on Monday night than they run it all year. But there goes the offensive coordinator. So, like, nobody can put their finger on it right now. But it doesn't feel good. I feel like the Jets can cover in this game. I feel like this is the Jets' season. And this is the Buffalo season, too. But I feel like they can win this game in spite of their quarterback right now. 
Nick, tell the people where they can find you and uh, what time are you on, my friend? Also, like, hey, Joe Brady, like, don't call a pass play the entire game. Like, let the Jets screw up and win the game, like, 13-3. Like, I mean, that, that's what I... If you bet on Buffalo, that's what I would want to see. Uh, you better you bet weekdays 3 to 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Odyssey app, uh, BetQL app, radio stations nationwide, including, like, Sirius 160, XM 205. Uh, we're on stadium as well from 4 to 6. Yeah, all, all sorts of good stuff. And on Sunday morning, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern also. Great stuff as always, man. We look forward to talking with you next week, guys. Thanksgiving. We got Thanksgiving Day uh, games. Obviously, we got Black Friday games. So we got a lot, a lot of stuff to get to, and I can't wait to see what Nick thinks about the betting aspect of things. Nick, thank you so much. We'll talk to you next time. Good Wish Nick. everybody minimal sweats, winning bets, the absolute very best of luck. Thanks, guys. All right, guys. 